Thank you for the kind invitation and thank you to everyone who is uh, sticking it out. I'm going to review radiotherapy very briefly and then a little bit of the clinical evidence and um, some future suggestions for how to help us better select patients who may be suitable for radiotherapy. We've heard in prior talks there's been a, a relatively exponential improvement in how radiotherapy can be delivered now compared to the last 10 and 20 years. These are some means that ablative dose radiotherapy can be delivered. Um, most types of external beam and intraluminary, intrabiliary brachytherapy have been used to treat different uh, cholangiocarcinoma patients. Oops. So this is just a, a description of some of the advances in radiotherapy. We can give radiation hypofractionated regimen, SBRT. We control for breathing motion now with multiple different um, uh, vendors and solutions. Adaptive radiotherapy is becoming more prime time, and image guidance is improving with MR, for example. And we're also using machine learning and artificial intelligence to hopefully help automate and improve the quality of our treatment. So as we know, have heard from the prior talks, cholangiocarcinoma is a heterogeneity, uh, heterogeneous cancer, um, not only in terms of location, but also uh, mutational status. And similarly, it's quite heterogeneous in terms of where radiotherapy may have the biggest impact. For peripheral intrahepatic lesions, hypofractionation such as SBRT may be uh, suitable. But for extrahepatic lesions, there's rationale to give longer fractionations to help spare toxicity to adjacent uh, bowel and to help uh, prevent uh, biliary edema or biliary-related toxicities. The bottom line is there's no level one evidence. There um, are no published uh, phase three studies. There have been several phase three studies asking the question about radiotherapy in addition to chemotherapy for unresectable disease that have uh, closed due to poor accrual. I believe there is one at least one randomized study ongoing in UK. So most of our evidence is from single series, SEER database, or other national data base, or multi-institutional small studies. And most of the data comes from series with heterogeneous um, inclusion of patients. A few uh, bottom line is that this is very different than pancreatic cancer, where the dominant pattern of recurrence is a local regional, more so than pancreatic cancer, despite these tumors being in the same location. And even though there's not a proven survival benefit, we could, um, we could recommend improvement of local control as a therapy to improve quality of life, as uncontrolled biliary cancers can be very difficult to manage with stents, et cetera. However, um, if radiotherapy is used, we cannot recommend using it in alone or before systemic therapy, given the survival advantage with uh, uh, systemic therapy. This is a brief overview of some data from the SEER database for extra and intrahepatic cholangiocarcinomas showing best outcomes when surgery is done, best outcomes um, for patients who receive uh, radiotherapy and um, uh, surgery versus uh, no surgery. Clearly, there's biases in this type of database, um, but other um, reviews and meta-analysis have showed similar findings with better local control and survival when radiation can be added. At University of Michigan, there was a hyperfractionated protocol started in the 1990s for unresectable intrahepatic uh, cholangiocarcinoma. Median survival for these patients with very large tumors was 13 months. Um, a sensitizer, hepatic arterial FUDR, was used. And the median tumor size around 6 centimeters local control at 2 years was 90%, showing that some tumors can have sustained control if enough dose can be delivered safely. This is an overview of SBRT for, uh, from many different centers in the setting of different types of cholangio. And as I've mentioned, there are heterogeneous perihilar tumors, intrahepatic and extrahepatic in these different series. And the bottom line is that there's heterogeneous outcomes as well, given the heterogeneous patients. This is a little more difficult to have sustained local control compared to HCC, but I'd say the local control outcomes are better than with colorectal metastases and variable survival. And if you read the fine print of most of these papers, there is an increased risk of biliary toxicity compared to uh, using radiotherapy for other hepatic cancers. So 15 fraction regimen is investigated um, at MD Anderson and Mass General Hospital. They reported on their pooled um, results where a majority of patients were treated with hypofractionation using this regimen. They did um, have var uh, varying doses with concomitant boost within the GTV. And their outcomes were excellent. So um, local control 
was better with higher dose radiotherapy, as was survival. And if you can see the three-year survival of 73% versus 38%, um, for those who were able to be treated with higher doses. Both outcomes are much better than what we've seen with the uh, systemic therapy only trials, albeit these are different patients. And um, of course, you can't uh, say that this is definitive that radiotherapy improves outcomes. But some of these patients are living many years without progression. A subsequent study from the same group looked to validate these findings in a prospective uh, regimen. And similarly, local control was excellent, 94% at two years, survival for intrahepatic clangio, 46%. So moving to perihilar carcinoma. So the best outcomes, I would argue, are from uh, multimodality treatment, including transplant. And this was started by the Mayo Clinic, and you can see the uh, standard chemotherapy, radiotherapy that was used in these uh, patients. Radiation consists of a uh, first phase of external beam radiotherapy to treat the primary with a margin of the ducts, including the uh, nodes for 45 gray and 1.5 gray IB, uh, BID, followed by a brachytherapy boost. And looking at outcomes, uh, the five-year survival rates do indeed appear much better in patients who end up having a transplant, 85% in one of the first papers versus 21% after resection alone. And similarly, there is less patients to have uh, recurrence following transplant than resection. Updated results show similar results, slightly lower survival, and again, showing the importance of the underlying liver disease. So patients with P um, a per a PSC had far uh, better outcomes in terms of survival than those with de novo cancer without having uh, primary biliary cirrhosis. There are some uh, increasing uh, use of radiotherapy in the setting outside of the Mayo Clinic, and this is one pooled analysis, again, um, showing at, at better outcomes than what one would expect with resection alone, and similar to the Mayo experience, uh, pathological complete responses. So about 54% of the livers had no cancer. So although I would like to say that that is due 100% to the radiotherapy, I don't think we can necessarily say that. There are some patients who may not have had pathology uh, at the time of treatment, and it probably is a combined uh, effect. We also are uh, treating such patients with a slightly different um, strategy in terms of giving the radiotherapy. We, can, we continue to use the 45 gray, 1.5 gray BID with capsidabine treating nodes, but instead of a brachytherapy boost, we use a stereotactic boost but with hyperfractionation trying to spare toxicity to the biliary system, which can be severe, especially for those patients who never make it to transplant. I, unfortunately, when we look at our experience, I, I would say this is disappointing. Our median survival is 18.8 months. There is high drop-off. Many patients develop nodes or at laparotomy had peritoneal spread. We had 56% uh, survival post-transplant right now, so those who tend to make it to transplant do very well. Um, however, when we looked at our program, the two factors we think might be contributing to overall worse outcomes are delays in starting therapy, as we are a referral center for much of Canada, and our expanded criteria. Some cancers were beyond three centimeters, and I think it is important to keep within uh, the recommended size that Mayo described, and that hopefully will lead to improved outcomes. So what about adjuvant therapy? Again, there's a summary of uh, outcomes, uh, not randomized, suggesting that there may be improved local control and survival for patients who receive adjuvant rated therapy. The SWOG study was alluded to. It was a single arm phase two study for extra hepatic clangio or gallbladder cancer patients, and you can see the factors here. Um, the chemotherapy was uh, gem kept, followed by uh, chemo radiotherapy and standard fractionation. And in this curve, um, on B, you can see that the yellow uh, line represents the R1 patients versus the blue, which is the R0 patients. So overall survival similar, suggesting that radiotherapy may have reduced the risk of local recurrence. Overall, the local failure after this, again, was low. 21% of patients had a local recurrence compared to historical series that the recurrence rates tend to be much higher. So what about radiotherapy in the bill cap era? We just heard about um, capsidabine being standard of care. 
we honestly don't know. Um, I would strongly recommend uh, chemotherapy, capcitabine, given the benefits that we just heard about. However, in selected patients after chemotherapy, I think it's worth a discussion regarding uh, radiotherapy, and this is consistent with ASCO guidelines, specifically for R1 extrahepatic or gallbladder cancer patients where the ben there appeared to be a possible benefit from the SWOG study. But of course, a consultation doesn't mean we would routinely give radiotherapy to all patients. We need to consider the goals of care, comorbidities, competing risks, performance status. And not all um, radiotherapy fields may be the same, just depending where the R1 margin is. So how do we select patients? I think the bottom line is we need improved biomarkers for selection of patients with radiotherapy. And we are behind medical oncology, and I think we need to come to the plate, participate in batch or basket trials where the mutational status of patients is considered not only as a prognostic factor or a factor to help with systemic therapy, but potentially to help with the decision to use radiotherapy when there isn't level one evidence and we're weighing the pros and cons. KRAS mutations, P53 mutations are associated with uh, radiotherapy resistance and worse outcomes uh, compared to uh, wild type. The majority of patients with cholangiocarcinoma do not have KRAS mutations, so there may be a benefit. But it would be important to look at that when making decisions, and I hope radiotherapy can be included more formally in studies moving forward. Of course, also we have to uh, consider the anatomical um, considerations of whether radiotherapy can be delivered uh, safely, their liver function, and the spared liver remnant that we plan. So in conclusion, we do need higher level of evidence. It's been challenging. Some studies have closed due to poor accrual. But I think a goal of uh, having uh, improved local regional control in this part of the body is an important endpoint. Most of the cholangias are KRAS wild type, so hopefully we'll be radiation responsive. We've shown that there are some long-term survivors in unresectable intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma patients who ultimately receive radiation. For post-surgery, I would recommend radiotherapy consultation for those with R1 resection. And if we give radiation, it should be done after standard of care or systemic therapy. Thank you very much.